Hi, I'm Neil from Kumarian, which is a community benefit society in Pembrokeshire, and I'm over on the west coast of Pembrokeshire today, a community supported agriculture project over near St David's. And I'm going to show you how to do winter pruning of apples and pears. Winter pruning is what we do with apples and pear trees in particular. We don't do it with stone fruit in this country, in Britain. Uh, that's fruit like uh, any fruit with a stone in the middle, like cherries and plums, because that makes them susceptible to a disease called silver leaf. So we focus on apple trees and pear trees, and I'll show you the principles and techniques to do a good enough prune of an apple or pear tree. So before we get stuck into actually pruning the tree, it's really helpful just to think a little bit about why we're pruning a tree and what's going on with an apple tree. This is quite a small squat dwarf sort of apple tree and apple trees will come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. A lot of that depends on what it was grafted onto. Almost all apple and pear trees are grafted onto a rootstock, which largely defines how big that tree is going to get. Anything from an M27 rootstock, which will make a really small little patio apple tree, um, which needs to be staked all its life, but it's a fantastic little cropper to have in your little garden on a patio. All the way up to just a couple of numbers difference, gets you up to an M25 tree, a full-sized crabapple sized tree, eight to 10 meters in height. No matter what size tree you've got though, what size of rootstock you've got, every apple tree genetically is trying to be as big as it can possibly be. It's gonna try and grow as much as it can grow, as much as its rootstock will let it grow. Um, so it's good to remind ourselves why we're pruning it and what's going on. One of the things we're doing with pruning an apple tree is encouraging that growth to go in the directions we want it to go and stopping it from going in the ways we don't want it to go. So we're clearing out branches that are going into the wrong directions, branches that might cause problems and diseases, and encouraging by cutting the growth to move in the directions we want it to go in. We're also clearing the tree out a little bit because this is a cultivated tree that's been developed over a very, very long period of time. It's a little bit more delicate than the wild crabapple trees. And if we don't look after it, it's much more prone to disease. So clearing out the center, letting the air move through it a little bit more to clear out some of the diseases and problems helps the tree breathe and keeps it healthier as well. So one thing that can really help when you're pruning an apple tree is to think about the energies of the tree and where they are at different points of the year. Just imagine in the summer, this tree is going to be full of leaf and fruit. It's going to be focused on growing and producing all the energy of the tree. Imagine it's right up there in the top of the tree in the canopy and in the branches. Then you have to imagine as we move down towards the winter, the tree is going to carry its energy and take it down into the roots. And alongside that, it's going to take a memory of what shape and size it is. Don't worry about whether an apple tree has a memory, none of us knows, but just imagine it does because it's helpful. Imagine it has a memory of where all its branches are, what size and shape it is, and it carries that memory down with it into the roots of the tree along with its energy and it holds it there over the winter. Now during that winter we come along with our pruning saws and our secateurs and we chop off branches and we nip at little bits and we take off bits and pieces and we've changed the shape and we've reduced the shape of the tree. Now spring comes the following year, the tree starts to wake, it rises that energy back up into the tree and with that energy, it brings that memory of what shape and size it is, but it finds it's not that shape and size anymore. It's smaller, it has a surplus energy, it has more energy than it thought it needed. It takes it up and it pushes that surplus energy out towards the places where you've been cutting. And that's where you're encouraging more growth because that surplus energy is carried out into the places that you've been pruning the tree. So what's worth remembering is if you cut hard on an apple tree in the winter, it will respond hard with growth. Vigorous pruning creates vigorous growth, in other words. So contrary to how it might feel, if you prune something back a little bit, that's actually slowing growth down compared to if you take it back a long way. Um, whereas if you prune in the summer, when the energy is all up in the tree, at that point, you're encouraging the tree to have something of a stress reaction, it has a bit of a panic, its energy is up here, it's trying to grow, it knows what's going on, and suddenly things are going wrong. That stress reaction causes the tree to do what they want to do in a panic mode and reproduce. It wants to produce seed in case it's in trouble. So it encourages it to produce fruit. So summer pruning causes the tree to, to produce more fruit buds, and winter pruning encourages the tree to produce more vegetative growth. Apples and pears have two different types of buds on them and they're very easy to tell apart. You've got leaf buds which uh, produce the leaves and they produce the vegetative growth and those are the ones that put where the branches will grow from. 
And then you have fruit buds, which produce the fruit and the blossom. Um, they're pretty easy to tell apart. A fruit bud is a big, juicy looking thing, like an apple. And a leaf bud is a lot smaller. It's flatter against the branch. And usually when you're pruning, you're pruning to a leaf bud because you're encouraging growth to move out and to grow off in the directions you're looking for it to grow in. The fruit will produce a longer branch. And after a while, the apple will start to push out little tiny clusters of fruit buds called spurs. It's not too hard to find where last year's growth started because every year when the tree sends out new growth, you can find what's called the growth ring on an elephant's foot, um, it's known as, which is like a wrinkle in the bark, which shows where the last year's growth started. And that happens all the way along the bark. You can look at the history of a tree by finding those, those wrinkle marks, those wrinkle rings, um, and seeing how much the tree grew, where it grew, how it's grown over the history of several years. That's a useful way to look for it. When you're pruning on, on, an, on one year old growth, last year's growth, and you're pruning against those leaf buds, it's a few things to bear in mind. First of all, the bud points in different directions along the branch, and whichever direction that bud's pointing will indicate the sort of direction any branch will grow in. So if this one's pointing up like this, if there's a bud here, it's likely to grow that way. If there's a bud here, it's likely to grow that way. So if we don't want them growing into the center of the tree, we don't want to cut to a bud that's pointing in that direction. So an outward facing bud is what we're looking for. And when we cut against the bud, we don't want to cut too far from it because all the growth from the tree, all the life is going to move from the bud and then out. And anything past that bud, as long as there's no more buds up there, that will just die back. And that will cause death and, and dead wood can cause disease in the tree. So we don't want to cut a long way from a bud. But we also don't want to make sure we don't cut right into the bud because obviously that's going to damage it and then you won't get the growth. So you cut just next to it, like that. So it's uh, nearly time to start pruning the trees. One other quick thing just to touch on is the two main shapes of apple tree that we prune to. So one is known as a kind of goblet or a bowl shape where you get um, a trunk of a tree and then you've cut it in such a way that it will branch out sideways from multiple directions with a nice clear center in the middle. Clear enough theoretically for you to be able to throw your hat through the middle in the winter when you've done a really good pruning job. The other version is known as a central leader. It has one central leader all the way up the tree with tiers of branches coming off from the side. The most common way of pruning a tree and the most helpful for gardens and community orchards and things like that is the, the goblet, the bowl shape. It keeps the branches low down, it's easier to reach the fruit and it's really good for trying to keep the center clear and so get the air flowing through it and keep disease out. So we're going to focus on the, the goblet, the bowl style um, pruning today. And just before we start cutting, the one quick thing to remember is that you always have to make sure that your tools are clean. We're going to be using a pruning saw and some secateurs today. Keep them clean. Uh, you can clean them with, we're going to use vodka, alcohol. Today you can use white spirit, you can use strong vinegar, and there's things you can buy from the shops to clean them if you want to as well. But it's really important because every time you cut with a pair of secateurs, um, you're getting whatever's in that tree onto those secateurs. And as you move around with the secateurs, you're potentially spreading some disease from one tree to parts of that tree elsewhere or off to other trees as well. So keeping them clean, wiping them regularly with some kind of cleaning fluid is really important. Okay, so let's start pruning. And I'm gonna show you how to prune this tree in five steps. And step number one is still not to cut. Step number one, we're gonna observe the tree. It's really important to step back and take a look at the tree that you're pruning. Look at its past, its present, and its future. So when we're looking at its past, we can look for those elephant's feet that will show us its history, how it's grown. We can look for its pruning history. We can look for any signs of things that have been happening to this tree and how it's been growing. We can look at its present, what's going on with it right now, where are there any issues, where are there any disease problems, what do we think needs to happen. And as we think about what do we think needs to happen, so we're merging into thinking about its future. How do we want this tree to grow next? What needs to happen to it to support it to grow into the future shape that we want it to grow into? So that time 
spent looking at the tree and thinking it through, not getting stuck straight into cutting, is really important so you can form this tree into the shape and keep it growing into the right healthy shape long term that you want it to be. Step number two, we're going to start cutting the tree and we're going to focus first of all on the acronym CDDD, -D, which stands for crossing, damaged, dead and diseased. And all of that really is about looking for issues that are going to cause disease problems in the tree. So crossing branches, there's a really obvious one over here, crossing branches as the wind blows rub against each other and that rubbing can cause damage in the tree and damage can introduce disease. So we're looking to get rid of crossing branches. We're also looking to get rid of damaged branches. That's damage caused by the rubbing, but there's damage here that's been caused by something or other that snapped these branches. And that damage also will likely introduce disease into the tree. Dead wood anywhere on the tree has its ecological benefits, but too much of it, again, can introduce disease into the tree. So we wanna take out dead wood. And if there are any areas where there's obvious disease problems that we can take out, it won't cause too much damage to the tree. If you can find areas of canker on the branches, then we want to try and prune those out as well. And cankerous wood, if you do prune it out, take that away from the tree and ideally burn it. Don't put it in the compost pile or anything, just burn it so you can get rid of that disease. Step number three, we're going to focus on the branches of the tree that are growing in directions that are going to cause problems for us. So that means really branches that are growing into the centre of the tree that are going to fill up that lovely central bowl that we're trying to clear out. Branches that are growing far too low, that are going to get in the way and that are never going to get enough light for the fruit to, to, uh, to ripen properly. Branches that are growing vertically because vertical branches are going to go right up, right to all the other ones. They're going to cause all kinds of rubbing and vertical branches don't tend to produce very much fruit on them. And uh, branches that are just growing far, 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 far too long that are going to start to weigh down with the fruit and perhaps either jumble up with other branches or start touching the ground. So when you're pruning, um, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure you're not taking more than about 20% of the tree away in any one season. If you, if you take more than that, you cause far too much stress to the tree and that can cause all manner of disease and problems and potentially even death of the tree. So never more than 20% of the tree. You need to prioritize therefore getting rid of those disease problems, any of those damage problems that are gonna cause issues, anything that's, that's, that's filling the tree up and causing it to not be able to breathe. And it might be that that means that there are decisions you have to take um, about pruning, whether there are things you want to prune that you're just not going to prune this year. If there's more to do than, than that 20% allows, then the, prune needs, the tree needs to be pruned over more than one season. So taking it over two or three years of pruning to get it to the form it needs to be. Step number four is where we start to make some decisions about some of the cuts that are not to do with any of those problem branches necessarily, but where we just need to take a little bit more out from the tree to help it breathe and to get the form we want it to take. And an important part of this process is thinking about where the tree's going and what its future is going to be and thinking about whether branches in certain places might cause us issues, problems or opportunities in the future. And remembering when we cut to a bud, what direction that bud is going to, going to grow when it becomes a branch. So as an example, there's a branch here and there's a branch here and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, well, if I push them together, they're knocking onto each other. But also if they carry on growing, this one's going to carry on up like that. This one's going to carry on as well. They may cause an issue. And sometimes pruning is an art as much as it is a science. There'll be people watching this video that will have pruned this tree differently. In fact, probably anyone who knows about pruning would prune this tree differently to each other beyond uh, the basics. And if you're not sure whether you want to prune something off a tree or not, don't do it. It's simple. If it really becomes a problem, you can come back later, next year maybe, and take it off then. So if you're not sure, just don't cut the tree. In this case, and because these are going to knock into each other, I'm going to take a little bit off but I'm not going to take too much. In this step four, it may be significant. It may take a reasonable amount of wood off, never getting over that full amount of 
or it may be quite small. There may be just a few nips and tucks you need to make here and there just to get to the tree moving into the right direction. Okay, step five, the last one. We've cleared out the tree. We've given it lots of breathing space. We've taken out all the problem branches. Um, there will be a lot of regrowth as a result of all this pruning because the winter pruning encourages growth. So in the summer, we might want to come back and nip out any of that new growth, especially those vertical young shoots that will tend to grow from a bigger cut. The last thing we're gonna do now is just think about a little bit of encouraging of new growth in the branches that we've left and that we want to carry on moving. So we're gonna to get to each of last year's end bits of the branches, this one year old growth, which starts there to there. And we're just gonna nip it back by about a third. That cut, remember that winter cut encourages more growth. So we'll take it from here, we'll take it back to there, and this bud here will then be encouraged to grow out as a branch and a little bit further in the direction we want it to do. So we're just going to work around the tree, going around to all of those last branches, finding the bud that's pointing in the right direction, about a third of the way along, and just nip it back. And that's the last step of the proof. Okay, that's it. We pretty much pruned the tree now. Um, if you're ever unsure when you're making a cut, remember, just don't make it. Come back next year, have another look and decide then. And really it's as simple as those five steps. Observing, C, D, 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 and then dealing with any branches that are moving in the wrong direction. Then taking a final look on any bigger branches to clear out the tree and form it to the right shape. And then finally, nipping back last year's growth by about a third. If you want to find out any more about what we do at Kumarian, you can just go to www.kumarian.org.uk. Okay, let's see if we've uh, pruned it to a really good goblet shape. Let's do the test. Hey, did it.